tomorrow's finals have been sponsored by the Allied Irish Bank. Uh, I have one team in the world. Carrie Gallagher, if it is a Ryan Rehel, if it is a three, Henry Foley, if it is a Cahar, Dennis Murphy, if it is a Bowie, Rob Finnegan, if it is a Shane, Danny Buckley, if it is a Sharp, Eddie Tooney, if it is a Hook, Brad McSweeney, if it is a Nay, Warren, Norman, if it is a Dead, Gene Dyne, if it is a India, Dennis O'Leary, and if it is a Noya, Ian O'Leary. And the substitutes, James Foley, Eric Howe, Mary Kelleher, Ken Fahill, Patrick Gallagher, John Lyons, Paul O'Leary, and P.J. Murphy. St. Martin's goal, number one, Pat O'Connell, Henry Lowe, Martin Caffrey, number three, David Healy, number two, Cahar, Going Barry Murphy, never a shame, Denny's next sweetie, never a shark, John Cooney, never a hug, Paul Bell, never a name, Ali Murphy, never a dead, Barry Cafferty, never a hand, young Sean Cooney, and never a doy up, Liam O'Hanley. And the fair of it, Michael Castanor, David Sexton, Ted Sheehan, Alan Cabin, Mike Young, Moyle O'Connor. Milo O'Connor, Alexandria Savage, and Jeremy Casey. And, and this, this match for the small schools is a 12 side team. 12 side playing 12 side. One of the side. go in the Ryan F final of Skeena Skull, uh, our last game here today, on Wednesday, the 9th of November, and the teams in opposition here are uh, Bullock playing in green and white, and the Skull may have locked teams, St. Lock teams, Dunamore playing black and white, hoops. And it's Dunamore in twin early attack. Uh, trying to break up the attack there for uh, Balug is number seven, the captain, Eddie Toomey, trying to get it away. Only 12 aside in this, one of the lower sections of Ski in the Skull because these are smaller schools so they would have difficulty fielding a full strength 15 aside team. The referee today is Martin Burke, well known Ski in the Skull referee. Previous game today was quite exciting. Let's hope this one lives up to the billing. In fact, all of today's games, three have been played already. All were exciting games. The highest margin of difference between teams was two points. And now it's Ab Abola going into the attack. However, Ivra Schacht and Son, uh, John Foley breaking up the attack and clearing the ball down to the far side. Number four racing over for it is Dennis Murphy. Over close to the far sideline, the referee Martin Burke blows the whistle, indicates an infringement there and awards a free to the green and white clad Ahabolog. Bends, lifts and strikes beautifully towards the city end, but wide on the far side as we look at it. So after two minutes of play, in the end score force, Ignaforne. Dunamore, puck out, being taken by goalkeeper Pat O'Connell, out to the centre of the field. Racing for it there is Noel Finnegan, number five, taking it along the ground is Noel and clearing it on the far side for Abolog. Whipped on by number seven, John Foley, the captain of Dunamore, down towards the far wing. 
There they are now over in the far wing, close to the Allied Irish Bank sign, which reminds us, of course, that they are our sponsors of the finals this week. Our thanks to them. Stalemate over there, over by the Dunamore substitute bench. And eventually it's Abola Grace racing into the attack, but over carrying the ball, says referee Martin Burke. And it will be a relieving free for St. Lachtine's Dunamore. Driven down towards the far corner. Across goes number five again, Noel Finnegan. Playing a lot of the Schlitter in these early moments. Clearing it towards the wing, very close to the line. Kept in play by number seven, Eddie Toomey, the captain. Eddie has little room to turn there, and eventually it's taken from him. And back in, roaring into attack. A great chance here, dangerous ball in and a great save inside. A top class save there by uh, Pat O'Connell for uh, Dunamore. And now it's Dunamore into the attack. Down under the stands here in front of us. Whipped in there but nicely hooked, that's number nine. Number nine is Ollie Murphy, Ollie drives along the ground. And it's whipped in again, close to the end line. Very close and eventually pulled in by number... Uh, 12, I think it was Liam O'Hanlon. Yes, it was Liam who pulled in it eventually and drove it wide, so we've still to score with almost four minutes played in the first half of the Rhine F final. A puck out for Abolog being taken by Brian Rahel. Number two, over to the far side. Now it's Abolog who's going to the attack. Along the ground, half stopped in there. Whipped on by number 10, Gene Lyons. Over towards the far side, number 11 racing for it is Dennis O'Leary. And eventually that ball is pulled on and bobbles harmlessly wide on the far side at the city end goal, which is de being defended by Dunamore in this first half. So the puck out being taken by number three this time. That's the full back, David Healy for Dunamore. A long one down to the centre of the field. Breaking out there, coming across and being whipped on. Anybody's ball, number seven, uh, Eddie Toomey trying to clear it for uh, Abolog. And it goes as far as number nine. Nine is Olin Noonan, Olin along the ground. Two, two forwards, one back. The back takes his time, out comes the goalie, whips on it along the ground, only as far as number nine. That's Olin Noonan again, Olin tossing for possession, trying to get it in. Goes across in front of the goal, eventually it breaks for number 11, Dennis O'Leary. Dennis tries to get it in, the back's trying to get it out, eventually number seven. John Foley, who's hurled well so far, trying to clear it away for Dunamore. Danger for Dunamore still, it again breaks to John, number seven, he clears it well, out along the far side. Racing across is number eight there, Paul Walsh, Paul driving it along the ground. A, thrust, a race for possession over there, it breaks again to Paul. He gets his stick in there, trying to, but eventually number five, Noel Finnegan, is attempted clearance is blocked over on the far side, and back come Dunamore. Never a shock to have shoot. Shinishana follows. Tolunger Bay Town Arenas. Pulling Shesh Takadasi. The drawn hole. And it's whipped in again. A dangerous ball. But number three, Paddy Foley there. Kicks it and clears it long out to the centre of the field. But back comes St. Lachtines. Nice bit of hooking there by a Dunamore player. Or by a Abolog player. That was Ola Noonan, number nine. Ball going over to the far side. Number eight, Dan McSweeney racing. Dan lifting, turning away from his markers nicely. Three men around him. Eventually, they succeed in blocking him. It comes to number 10, Barry Cafferkey. Barry, however, has foiled in his attempted uh, puck there, and it's Abolog now trying to open up an attack. So far, no pattern emerging in this game. Uh, a lot of the play has been out around centre field. Neither attack has got the upper hand. Perhaps this is a chance for Abolog. Bursting through there. Controlling the ball well and tapping it nicely towards the goal, but just wide was number 11 for Abolog, and that was Dennis O'Leary, son of teacher Pat O'Leary, of course, who is coaching this Abolog side here today. And from the puck out, it's number seven. Abolog, that's Eddie Toomey driving it long, opening up an attack for his team. Abolog beginning to establish a bit of supremacy now, another chance for them, and this time it's straight and through. The same man again, number 11, Dennis O'Leary, 
I'm sure his dad will be delighted with that. He was the man who was narrowly wide a few moments ago. So the first score of the game, a point for Ahabalak from number 11, Dennis O'Leary. After seven, almost seven and a half minutes of play. The puck out. Dunamore trying to do something about that score, but away comes number seven, the captain, Eddie Toomey, driving it long. A dangerous ball, breaking inside, number 12 is racing for it. 12 is Aoife, Aoife O'Leary. Sister of Dennis, so it's a brother and sister combination in the attack for our bullet. This time the ball breaking out to the same Dennis and back it comes in, but out comes full back David Healy. Whips on it along the ground, but racing in is number seven, Eddie Toomey. Eddie trying to get it in. The defenders from St. Loch Deans, Dunamore saying thou shalt not pass, and away they come. Sweeping it out of defence. Down the swing under the stands here. Turning away as number 10. 10 is Barry Cafferkey trying to get it in. Hard pulling by number 11 there, Sean Foley. He's trying to get in as well. Eventually comes back out to Barry. Number 10. Barry drives a dangerous ball. It's uh, batted away by Paddy Foley inside. Breaking in front of the goal out there. Anything could happen here. Eventually it breaks for Dunamore. And they have another chance, but out comes number four. Four is Dennis Murphy. And Dennis turning away from his marker and poking it out towards the family. But no, more life in Dunamore in these last few moments as they try to come back into the game. Only one point in it. And that score scored by uh, Abelug's Dennis O'Leary. <laughs> and eventually the ball gone. Over the sideline on the far side. And it's sideline cut. Fresh air shot, first time he connects the second time. Dunamore trying to reply to that one point lead which Abelug holds at the moment. But the Abelug defence playing great. So look at that for power over there, bursting out. I think it was Eddie Toomey passing to Dan McSweeney. Dan trying to get it away, bursting past one man. Driving it up along, in towards 40 metres out from the city end goal, and here come Abelug. Is it Dennis? Yes, it is. Racing through, showing great skill, picking that ball, but eventually out. Out comes big David Healy, and he shrugs the shoulders and clears that slitter out to the far side. It's whipped on. A very good game here again in this final game, it must be said. And... Uh, Something we were discussing here in the commentary box after the last game. The standard of sportsmanship in all the games has to be complimented. Excellent in all the games so far today. The referees hardly needed any whistle. And again, the ball gone over the line on the far side. Sideline cut this time for... I thought it was for a ball out, but... Referee Martin Burke deciding it was a clash ball and he will throw it in between them. In it comes, number five, whipping hard as Noel Finnegan. It breaks away from him, however, to number four, Dennis Murphy. Dennis driving it long down the far side. There goes the other Dennis, Dennis O'Leary. This time, however, the Dunamore backs seem to have copped on a little bit to the danger posed by Dennis. They're closing him off more than they did in the early minutes. We've played half of the first half now. Ten minutes gone and back come Dunamore, but nicely intercepted there by the Abolog defence, ball on the ground, hard pulling, thrusting, trying to get it away, eventually it's it's still in there, it's the defence who prevail, half clear to the far side. Trying to get it up is number 10, 10 is Barry, Barry Cafferkey succeeds in getting it in along the ground, the cross calls the full back, Paddy Foley, half clears it, not a very good clear, just breaking towards the centre, racing in and whipping hard and low, a dangerous ball but wide, that was a very, very good pull indeed by uh, Dunamore's number 11, I think it was there, Sean Foley, who came in and whipped on that one. It's harder to follow the play in 12 aside because we're not quite sure which positions, which numbers are in. Ball out around the centre of the field, through Martin Burke's legs. Athletic acrobat uh, avoidance of the slitter there by uh, Burke. And it breaks eventually to uh, an Abolog player. Uh, I think that was uh, Eddie Toomey again, the captain. Down the centre they go, Abolog back in the attack. The ball breaking away from Emily here, and across comes big strong player, who is number nine, Olin. Olin Noonan, however, is half blocked and eventually fully blocked. Out it comes to Ollie, Ollie Murphy, the Dunamore number nine, trying to get his side into the attack, but it 
again, it's number 7, Eddie Toomey, the captain, breaking up the attack and setting Abolog back into the attack. Number 10, Gene Lyons, racing onto that ball, along the ground. Abolog again, number 11, Dennis O'Leary, turns away from his markers, turns out, makes a bit of room for himself. Eventually, referee Martin Burke, I think, quite rightly indicating that Dennis turned once, twice, three times, and uh, took too many steps. Balletic uh, poise shown by Dennis there, but you're not allowed to turn that often in Gaelic games. From the resultant free, ball breaking to number nine uh, for Abolog. Oh, Olin Noonan, and Olin sets up the attack again. Again, it's Dennis, a dangerous ball along the ground, and his sister, uh, Aoife, number 12, uh, racing after it. She, however, will want to be quicker than even a drug assisted Ben Johnson to catch up to that one. And the ball trickles wide. The puck out. Out to the centre of the field. Number five there. Uh, that's Noel. Noel Finnegan turning away from two men. Driving it in dangerously. It's batted down and across comes Dennis. Dennis picks. However, he's robbed on this occasion. Ball breaking out. And it's lifted and struck along the ground. A dangerous ball in half blocked inside. Aoife O'Leary trying to add to it. And uh, number eight, Dan McSweeney is there as well. Eventually the defence half getting away. Only as far as number nine. Olin Noonan, the big strong man, playing midfield for Abolog and playing well, it must be said. Ball still in the Dunhamore danger area. Breaking across, whipped and hard by Aoife. Anything could happen in there. No quarter being asked or given. Eventually the back's trying to get it out. Half clearing it, Aoife is there again, so is Dennis, so is number eight, Dan McSweeney. Forwards crowding in around the goal, perhaps too many of them in there. Not much room for them, and again a low one, and a stop by fullback David Healy. And he comes powering out, turning away from his men, but a bad clearance by him. Straight in front of the goals again, Eddie Toomey, the captain of Abolog, racing in. However, Eddie is foiled, the ball breaking out number four, Dennis Murphy. Driving it along the ground, and still it's Abolog on the attack. Again, Dunhamore breaking up the attack. And the ball is whipped out to the far side. Number 10 racing across is Barry. Barry Cavakin trying to get it up the wing. Succeeds in doing so. But only as far as number 5. Noel Finnegan playing well. Noel, however, on this occasion misses the ball. <laughs> trying to get back to make up for his mistake. Half succeeds in doing so. Still, Dunhamore uh, trying to add to the attack over on the far wing. Ball coming out to the centre of the field, a fresh air stroke there, giving Abolog a chance to go back into the attack. Number seven for Abolog there is Eddie Toomey, the captain. Eddie takes it out to the far side and drives it up into the attack as far as Dennis. The white helmeted Dennis, very, very closely marked. Hand passes it in, goes in towards the full back. He half misses his stroke, a chance here perhaps. Eve O'Leary and Dennis O'Leary both going for that one. Also number ten, Gene Lyons. Eventually the Dunhamore defence getting it away. Over towards the far side, towards Barry. Barry turns away from his marker, half blocked down. Barry Caffigan is puck going over, but there is number five, playing a great game. Noel Finnegan, clearing it first time. Second time, however, he meets Barry, who was fairly solid. And Barry Caffigan drives it along the ground, trying to set up a Dunhamore attack. So far, it must be said that the Dunhamore uh, forwards have got very little room. Perhaps they'll get a bit now. The ball going in towards the far side, across goes full-back Paddy Foley. Paddy pulls on it along the ground, out it comes. But it's Dunhamore back in the attack. Whipped on across the goal towards the corner square. Number four there is Dennis Murphy. Dennis lifts and strikes and drives a good clear. It's only, however, as far as three Dunamore players in the centre of the field. One of them is number seven, John Foley, the captain. And John Foley, the captain, throws that ball over the bar to open the account for Dunamore after almost 16 minutes of play in the first half. So just four minutes to go. The sides are level. Not very high scoring. Not very many scores, just a point each, but quite a good game, it must be said. Uh, perhaps Abolog having the better of the play, but the scores are level. The puck out being taken by number two, Brian Rahel. Brian drives it out long and hard towards the far side, racing across at number eight, Dan. Dan McSweeney. Back comes number seven, Eddie Toomey, playing a whale of a game so far, driving it up along the far wing. Racing across is Dennis, however he's behind his man on this occasion, but it breaks kindly for him. Dennis O'Leary, Dennis taking it along the ground and whipping it across, along the ground, a dangerous ball. Number nine driving it across and it's Eve O'Leary in front of the goal, a great chance for her, second chance, perhaps she pulls, yes, what a goal! A great goal there, for our bullock by number 12, Eve O'Leary. Her brother Dennis put the ball across. She whipped on it very quickly first time when she had an open goal in front of her. She might have done better to stop it. However, she missed the first one, 
went back, collected the ball, and whipped on the ground and stuck it in the corner of the net. And there was nothing goalkeeper Pat O'Connell of Dunamore could do about it. And now our Bullock taking heart from that score. Eva has looked dangerous all along. That was the first real chance she got, and she put it away. Uh, our Bullock forward tripped there as he went through the free taken by number seven, Eddie Toomey. It bubbles off somebody's stick in there. The umpire indicating, I think, that it actually was deflected by a defender. So after 17 and a half minutes of the second half with the score um, with the score Abolog 1-1 one, one, Dunamore a point it's a 65 for Abolog and coming up to take it is number 2 uh, number 2 is Brian Rahel Brian strikes it high umpire looking up at his post indicates that Brian didn't strike it accurately, the ball goes wide. So fun on the score, Maravisha. Cool, Agus Kulin, the Bullock. Agus Kulin Ivan, it don't look more. The puck out over to the far side, number five, Noel Finnegan, picking and striking beautifully over his shoulder. Down long to number nine, Olin. Olin Noonan, long the ground and in towards the goal scorer, Aoife. However, the full back is there this time. He picks it. He drives past Tooling. He's hooked well in there by Dennis, Dennis O'Leary. And eventually he gets another chance, all on his own. No support at all for David Healy. And eventually David succeeds in half clearing it. But only as far as the Tigerish captain of Apple, of number seven, Eddie. And Eddie drives a dangerous ball in towards the square. He's played a great game so far, has Eddie Toomey, the number seven and captain for Apple. So with just about a minute left to play in the first half of the Line F final. That goal by Aoife O'Leary separates the teams. The puck out. A very poor one on this occasion. Chance again, perhaps, for a Bullock to add to their tally, but no, says fullback David Healy, who has played very well so far, it must be said. He bursts out and clears the ball down the far side to Barry. Barry Cafferkey putting it along the ground. It comes as far as, I think, it's Liam O'Hanlon. Driving it in, dangerous ball inside. It breaks past fullback. Paddy Foley, the first mistake he's made, he tried to bat it out to stop it on his stick and it skinned off his stick, skimmed off his stick and it could have broken more kindly for the forwards. As it is, it's a 65, perhaps the last puck of this half uh, for the boys of Tullamore. Placing it carefully there. Looking towards the goal, I think it's Paul Walsh, number eight. He drives it low in, it's stopped inside by the alert. Apollo defence in the person of number four, Dennis Murphy. Dennis's clearance, however, is not a very long one. Eventually, it breaks nicely for number seven. Seven is Eddie Toomey. He takes it out of defence. Number nine adds to it. That's Olin. Olin Noonan along the ground. But the Dunamore defence stand firm. Back it comes to Olin again. And just on the stroke of half time, accurate timekeeping there by Martin Burke, August and scoring the home. Cool August Kulini, Gahabuluk, August Kulini Vonik, Donald Moore. And the second half of the Ryan F final underway. Referee Martin Burke throws in the Schlitter, 20 minutes now between. These two teams and the destination of the trophy. A very tight first half, an exciting first half. Just one goal between the teams. And that lead is being held by Abolog. Goal scored by Eve O'Leary, number 12. And Abolog now attacking the Black Rock goal. And that's Olin Noonan there. Big number nine, putting them into the attack. In the early moments of the second half. The attack being continued by number eight, Dan McSweeney. Dan had to catch the holly shot there, did well to get his puck in at all, and out comes the big fullback. David Healy had a great first half. Uh, sometimes lacked support. And it's a chance still for Abolog. The ball not cleared. Anything could happen here. It's still in the danger area. Hard whipping by Dennis O'Leary, number 11. Breaking nicely for number 10. Uh, number 10 is Gene Lyons. His uh, puck coming off a defender, and the umpire indicating that it will be a 65 for Abolog. Uh, 65 to be taken by number uh, 12. Or is it number 2, Brian Rahel? Who's come out as number 2, Brian Rahel? Driving it high and driving it wide. So the score remains 1 1 for our Bullock. A single point for Dunamore. David Healy's puck out to the near wing under the covered stand. 
taken nicely with a lovely piece of robbery there by star of the first half number seven Eddie Toomey the captain of Abolog and seven eight and nine for Abolog have played very well so has number five Noel Finnegan and so indeed his number 11 Dennis O'Leary Abolog holding the upper hand but not registering enough scores uh, for the amount of position they have they have held perhaps I may regret it later on because Dunhamore have looked dangerous enough on occasions and now it's Dunhamore on the attack down along this near sideline whipped on by number nine Ali Murphy in towards the goal mouth pulled on by Sean Foley number 11 across in front of the goal a great chance whipped on once twice backs and forwards are there eventually it's the backs who prevail and it's number two uh, Brian Rahel coming across and clearing it out on the far side and there goes number seven Quicksilver Eddie Toomey the captain and he scoops it nicely down along the far side towards Danger Man Dennis Dennis O'Leary picking nicely rounding his man will he get in his puck turning away trying to get it in getting it in but narrowly wide on the far side a lot of wides for our bullock so just two and a half minutes played in the second half the puck out by David Healy out to the centre of the field. Four or five of them under it, it breaks away and there goes number seven again, whipping hard. Ball going over towards the far side. Uh, the uh, Bullock men being encouraged there by Pat O'Leary, whom you can see on the far wing there with the white stripe. That's Pat, who was the clubman of the year for Cork in 87. A former teacher's and firm medal winner as well. And of course, a son and daughter of Pat's, I think, are forming the lethal forward combination for our Bullock here today. But as I speak, it's Dunhamore trying to get back into the attack. However, the attack is half broken up. The ball goes over the line on the far side, over by the play the game sign. And play the game is what they're doing. The umpire indicate, or the sideline uh, man indicating that it's uh, Nahabulog's sideline cut. Not a very good one. Uh, stalemate over there, hard pulling shins and hurlies making contact with one another. And eventually it's Dunhamore back in the attack. So far, however, the uh, Ahabalog full back line have been well able for them. On this occasion, the ball is whipped again and again it goes wide, so the score remains. One goal between the teams. 1-1 one, one for Ahabalog. Uh, point, one single point for Dunhamore. The puck out, out to the centre of the field. Under it is number seven again, Eddie Toomey. Eddie whips, and it's the number two there. Uh, Mark McCarthy trying to break up the attack and here comes Eddie on a solo run turning away turning away from one man and striking beautifully that would have been a great score he couldn't be faulted the effort was excellent S ran in saw the breaking ball ran in scooped it up and made great ground before turning back and striking beautifully but just narrowly wide the puck out by David Healy out to the centre of the field it's whipped on by number 8 Paul Walsh Paul trying to get in in goes number 7 John Foley the captain John whips hard John is there again he pokes it away as far as number 8 Paul Walsh Paul the driving it along the ground and now it's a chance for Dunhamore along the ground kicked along the ground by number 12 12 is Liam O'Hanlon Liam driving it in a great chance there inside a great chance inside I'm not sure who it was I'd say it was Liam O'Hanlon who hit it in but perhaps it wasn't I think it was Liam who was in the tail end of it yes it was Liam who was in on the edge of the square and had a chance there for Dunamore of perhaps finishing that to the back of the net didn't succeed in doing so the puck out out to the centre of the field again it's Eddie Toomey driving it down the far wing uh, one Dunamore player uh, eventually succeeds in beating two Arbolog and it comes away in the person of John Foley the captain however John can get can get that ball up and it's a bollocks marking very tightly over there and trying to spoil Dunamore's chances the ball eventually breaking across towards the center but it's taken nicely there by number 11 however there's an infringement spotted by Martin Burke uh, number 11 there Sean Foley as he picked that ball was being held by his opposite number and number 7 now John Foley the captain to take the resulting free dropping it in dangerously into the square they're pulling in there it's put across in front of the goal and another good chance and the umpire's hand is raised aloft indicating that it will be a 65 that ball must have deflected off a defender I didn't spot it but the umpire was much closer than I am 65, Martin Burke standing on the spot from whence it will be taken. Uh, 
to take this 65 is Evra Shachtri, Sean O'Fallu, and Captain Skull Naiv Lachtin. Sean O'Fallu Avula Ishtak, and now it's uh, Dunamore who perhaps are engaging in a little bit of squander mania, as the pundits might put it. Uh, they've had a few chances in the last few minutes and they haven't availed of them either, so perhaps we've about even Steven as regards missed chances. Ball back out in the centre of the field. No delay in these Guinness Skull games because the Australian rules type quick kick out in football and quick puck out in hurling is used and it adds greatly to the enjoyment of the games. As soon as one ball goes wide, there's a ball wide behind the goals ready with another one. So there's no delay, no time wasting whatsoever. And it's uh, John Foley there for Dunamore breaking up a half ball attack and Dunamore coming more into the game now with seven minutes played in the second half, 13 to go. Just a single goal between the teams in the Ryan F final. Over on the far side. Ball still on the ground. Nobody able to get it up. Eventually it's the Dunamore players taking it along the ground. But away come Abelog. Abelog now along the ground who's racing out for it though there as number two. Uh, that's uh, Mark McCarthy. Mark Rob the first time tries to get back and get it away. Still on the ground and it's whipped on there. Dunamore back into the attack. A great, great interception there and a great clearance, however, by the one of the Ahabolog defenders and the ball very near the near sideline. Number eight for Ahabolog there is Dan. Dan McSweeney. Eventually the ball is taken over the line by Ahabolog's number seven, Eddie Toomey, the captain, and it will be a sideline cut. Uh, I, actually, it was um, Dunamore's number seven who took it over the line and it will be a sideline cut for Ahabolog. Underneath the stand here, uh, that's Danny Buckley. Danny doesn't drive it very long, only as far as the other, the captain of the other team. That's number seven, John Foley. John driving it along the ground, eventually putting it over the line. And the linesman indicating that it was put out by John Foley of Dunamore. So again, it's Danny Buckley to take this for Abolog. Back goes Barry, Barry Cafferkey, number 10. Breaking up the attack, but eventually the ball coming to number 11. Uh, Dennis. Dennis driving it high in towards the goal. It breaks out in number 9, Olin. Olin Noonan driving towards goal number 8. Dan McSweeney trying to help him, but away goes the big man again. David Healy. He's playing a stalwart game there for the boys and girls, because there are girls in the substitutes as well, of Dunamore. But a dangerous, his clearance is blocked down, and again the danger is clear, but only as far as Olin Noonan, who's picking up a lot of loose ball for uh, Abolog, and he plays a lovely ball across. That's a great score, a great score. Very good play there by Olin Noonan, who picked up a loose ball over on the far wing. Saw number seven, Eddie Toomey, the captain, uh, on his own in the centre, tapped it across to Eddie. So after nine and a half minutes, of the second half, he increases the Habolugs lead, 1-2 for them, a single point still for Dunamore, a four-point lead for Habolug, and they're back in the attack, three of them to one defender, the defender trying to scoop it away, ah, oh, yes, yes, yes! There were three, three attackers there, I think it was Dan McSweeney eventually, number eight, Yes, it was Dan, who's racing out, getting the congratulations of his teammates there. So two quick scores there for Abolog. Uh, really opening up a big lead now. Two goals at six and two, eight points for Abolog. There are seven points ahead after 10 minutes of the second half. And really, a single defender there had much of a hope against three forwards. They, he did his best. He almost succeeded in clearing it. He was blocked by one defender. In nipped Dan Maxweeney, the number eight. Whipped it to the net. In by the post. Goalkeeper uh, Pat O'Connell couldn't do a thing about it. So now it's all Abolog. Abolog in the driving seat. And as if to confirm what I said, in goes the ball again. Inside on the line and it's kicked in. I think it may even have been kicked in by... It may have been kicked in by a defender, I'm not sure what happened in there. Referee Martin Burke is consulting with the umpire. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if he, if he allowed that goal or not. I We'll get back to you later about that, the puck out, out in the centre of the field. 
The score hasn't been registered on the on the scoreboard. So a little bit of confusion there. We'll try and sort it out. And over on the far side now, it's Ahabulog back in the attack again. And it's all Ahabulog now, just when Dunamore seemed to be coming back into it. Back came Ahabulog for a few quick scores. That ball drops into the square. And out to Olin. Olin turns and strikes it over the bar. Increase the lead. I'm not sure about the the last the last goal, whether it was a goal or not. I thought it was disallowed, but if it had been disallowed, uh, the umpires should have indicated such by crossing the flags. They didn't do that, but I, from what I saw of it, I think it was disallowed. So I I make the score at this rate anyway. At any at any rate, that it's two three for Abulog and just a single point for Dunamore. Uh, if the game were a closer game, perhaps that. Last goal would be would be much more important. We'll see at the finish. Uh, Twelve and a half minutes played in the second half. All Abolog now, and it looks like they're going to run out easy winners. Maybe the boys from Dunamore will make me eat my words yet, but I haven't seen anything to indicate that they will. Uh, Abolog have had an edge around the centre of the field, around half back in the centre of the field, and also up front in the person of in the personages of the two old areas, brother and sister, Dennis and Aoife. So I make the score, as I say, a slight bit of confusion there about that last goal, whether it was or not. At the moment, we make the score here. 2-3 for Abolog. Uh, a single point for Dunamore. Uh, 13 minutes gone in the second half of the Rhine F final. Just seven left to play. Dunamore with it all to do. And there's one of the men of the match, Eddie Toomey. No wonder he's the captain of Abolog. He's a lively lad. And there's another one, Noel Finnegan, number five. Driving it along the ground. The ball deceiving everybody there for a moment, but not deceiving Dennis. Dennis taking it out on the far side, lifting it, running. Turning away from his man, turning beautifully and striking beautifully in towards the goal. Dangerous ball, whipped on inside. And off a defender, and uh, 65 is the result. So, Ahabolog in total control. And I think over there, yes. I think we see Maraid Barrett over there, who is the teacher from uh, Dunamore. And obviously, she's not very happy with the way things are going at the moment. And as I speak, yet another score goes over the bar for the boys from Abolog. So all one-way traffic, so whether that goal was disallowed or not seems to make very little difference at this stage. And here they come again. So after a fairly even first half, where it must be said that even though the scores were even, I had said earlier that Ah Bullock were enjoying more of the play, and I had said that perhaps they'd regret a lot of missed chances well they've not missed too many in the recent times and there's another point so increasing their lead even more 2-5 there they have on the scoreboard now to just one single score for Dunamore so it looks all over for Dunamore a hard shoulder they are given by Dunamore's number 12 Liam O'Hanlon and eventually out comes number five, Noel Finnegan, hand passing himself out of danger nicely to number eight, uh, Dan. And Dan drives his team into the attack, and they're hunting in packs down there, the Abolog team. Dennis O'Leary, eventually the ball breaks to Olin. Olin Noonan looking towards the goal, that's a sweet shot, a dangerous shot from a very, very acute angle. What a score it would have been from Olin Noonan, he can't be faulted for missing it. So it's Abolog with their tails up, as they say, uh, Cruising now to what seems an easy victory in the second half, having led by just a single goal at half time. And here they come again. Uh, Noel, Noel Finnegan. However, he's blocked on this occasion. He's back to get a hard pull on the slitter there. Ball breaking out towards the far side. The rival coaches running up and down the line. Time definitely running out now, less than four minutes left for Dunham Fair play to them, they're not giving up. 
Bear hurling his hand as ever over on the far side. And the ball kicked out towards the far side in number 11, I think it's Sean Foley there who's trying to get it up. And he kicks it along the ground, it breaks for 12, I think that's 12, Liam. Liam O'Hanlon driving it low, chance of a consolation score here. Whipped on! Whipped on first time uh, by, I think, uh, Liam O'Hanlon. And uh, perhaps if he had stopped it, he might have buried it in the net. It was a good pull, but it went wide. Ball out around the centre of the field. Trasnan Suntiver, Kuig, Noel Finnig and Aguirre Ardu. Agus Abalagar and Nunsi Arish, Ivrashacht, Shne Eamon Otoman, Captain. Agus and Schlitter, Radalavanish, Agus Donok Moore, Nunsi Arish, Aguirre Ardu and Son, Nihok Shisos, Abdera Donok Moore, Yaina, Shne Evrinjev, Bara, Bara Kafferki, Aguirre Dollar Nunsi, Ak. Ta the cool egg egg a habolog on a cruig agus on a va and fat breaking out to number 10 there for Dunamore, but he doesn't succeed in rising it number nine Olin Noonan tries to rise it first time whips hard he's half robbed ball very near the line eventually Olin gets it away he's as strong as a horse this young fella there he goes he's beaten three or four men already Eventually, he's beaten by sheer weight of numbers. Ball very near the line, but kept in play by Barry. Surely he was pushed. He didn't like that tackle himself. Neither did referee Martin Burke. But referee Martin Burke is telling uh, Barry to take it easy. You've got your free. And the man to take it is John Foley, who hurled well in the first half. Didn't see much of the ball in the second half. Driving it in towards the goal mouth. It's cleared out by the defence to Noel. Two of them there, plenty time. I think Dunamore have given up now at long last. It's hard to blame them. They trail by 2-4. It's a full 10 points behind. They know the game is over. And back come Ahabolog. Along the ground, the chance here for number 12. That's Aoife, who scored a great goal in the first half. Being filed on this occasion by the full-back, David. Again, they're back in. And surely, surely, surely. Yes, yes, yes. 3-5. Ball finished to the back of the net. Almost on the stroke of 19 minutes, just a minute to play. It is academic, really. That was number eight, Dan McSweeney, who has played well throughout. And out around midfield, as I said, Abolog had all the hurling. And Dunamore had no answer whatsoever. In it goes, and again, Abolog won't concede a late goal, even. They won't even allow their rivals that consolation. And the full back line clearing the ball towards the line. Racing over is Ivernoy, Eshine Ali, Ali Omarku. Ali drives it high in towards the corner, uh, almost wide, kept in play and whipped on hard there, but no real method, method to this uh, Dunamore attack. And eventually, Martin Burke blowing full time, perhaps a little bit prematurely, but he knew, as we knew, that there was no coming back for Donald Moore. So, Ryan F final, deserving winners, Abolog 3-5, and Donald Moore, Colleen Avon, uh, Pua Anava, Agus Tilte, Ek Abolog.